Welcome to my party. I'm glad everybody can come. I know everybody loves having a party. I do. In this pepper party, we have cold, warm, and hot. Cold peppers being your sweet bells, hot being your serranos. They come in different colors, different shapes, and there's varieties for everyone. You know, people, people like choices. And when it comes to growing peppers, there are so many choices out there. I brought some of these seed catalogs. This is Will Height. This is uh, the Roarer, Roarer seed catalog. And this is Baker Creek. And I save these Baker Creeks from year to year. If nothing else, if you just look at the pictures. But when you when you look at the Baker seed catalog, the Baker Creek seed catalog, in the descriptions of these peppers, it gives you a wealth of information concerning each variety. Y'all can look at these, pass them around if you like. These are some Marconis that I grew last year. Here are some bananas that I grew last year. Peppers are grown all over the world and used in several different cuisines. Peppers are universally enjoyed around the world and have been grown on the International Space Station. All peppers are part of the capsicum anum family. They're a warm weather crop and they will continue to produce fruit for one and a half to three years, potted and protected from the elements like a frost and freeze conditions. So if you pot them in a container, you can take them indoors for the winter. If you overwinter your potted peppers, be sure to cut back your plants late summer for one last harvest before winter sets in. So if you prune those plants back, say in the middle of July, after they stop producing from your spring and early summer, they will grow you a good crop for the fall. <coughs> Actually, fall peppers, Melinda shared this with me years ago, that Mike, he really gets a lot of nice fall peppers in his garden. I would think you just prune them like tomatoes. I just take my little bird back. And I just kind of, I don't clip it all off, but maybe like this much off the top, like each branch. And side dress with a balanced fertilizer. And you'll get it, you'll get another fall crop. What makes peppers a fruit and not a vegetable? These are some peppers from last year also. The botanical classification. Peppers are fruit. A botanical fruit will have at least one seed and grow from a flower. The anatomy of the pepper flower. Peppers have what are called perfect flowers, which means that each individual pepper flower contains both male stamens and female pistil reproductive organs. As a result, each pepper flower can self-pollinate to produce a pepper on its own. Though peppers are capable of self-pollination, they often cross-pollinate and outcross. Peppers are self-pollinating. They can cross-pollinate and outcross like you saw in the previous slide. So when planning where to plant those peppers, keep this in mind. You may want to plant sweet at one end and hot at the other end of your garden. I plant all my sweet peppers in this part of my yard. My hot peppers I have in containers over by my well pump and on the other side of my house for that reason. 
Peppers contain seeds in the middle and grow from the flower of the plant. Even though peppers are used as a vegetable, they are technically a fruit because they come from a seed and a flower. Growing requirements. They need a rich organic soil. High fertilization, nitrogen early in growth for heavy production, and then a foiler feeding like weekly. Sunny location because they're sun loving. The optimum soil pH of 5.5 to 6.5, but then another source said 6.2 to 7. Richard and I discussed it, and we feel like if your soil is 5.5 to the 7 range, that you will be successful in your pepper production because you're adding to that soil, and as you add to the soil, you're changing the pH. Practice good cultivation and provide adequate moisture. Mulch conserves water and reduces weeds. No plants want to compete with Mr. Weed. I don't know how many of you like to go out there and pull weeds. I know I don't. <laughs> Upright growth and weight of heavy fruit, it helps you it helps to stake your plants or grow in cages like your tomatoes to protect the plants from breaking. Those plants can get this tall and they get very heavy with that fruit and if you don't have a support, they will blow over, they, the fruit will break off. So it's a good idea to stake them or put them in cages. Mulching your garden helps retain water and prevent weeds and also saves you time and money if you're on a city water provider. Pine needles, they break down slowly and add nutrients. Leaves help sweeten your soil. And then again, you have commercial mulch. Anytime you mulch your plants, you're conserving water and you're saving in the long run because you're not paying that water bill. Cold soil stunts the growth of peppers. The soil must be warm. They're a warm weather crop. Start your seeds indoors six to eight weeks before the last frost date, which in our area is zone 8B, which would be March 15th. Give or take, Use good judgment and follow the 10-day forecast on your weather app. This year, our weather was a little bit strange. I kept watching that 10-day weather. And after that last cold snap, I decided, well, everything's in the 40s. I don't see anything going into the 30s. So I went ahead and I planted mine. I did container gardening this year. And because I did container gardening, the soil in my containers is actually warmer than the soil that's in the ground. So it worked out well for me. By pinching off those flowers early, you will be rewarded in the end with a stronger plant that will produce plenty of fruit. By picking off those first little peppers when they're about this big, what you're doing is you're telling the plant to make stronger roots. And in the long run, a stronger, sturdier plant will provide more fruit. Regular harvesting of the pepper plants encourages it to produce more fruit also. So when you see your peppers and they're large and they're ripe, don't let them sit out there. Pick them. Enjoy them. When fertilizing your plants, reduce the nitrogen level once the plant begins to flower. Nitrogen is used to fuel the plant during its growth mode. You want that growth in the beginning. When fruit begins to develop, nitrogen needs to be balanced with potassium and phosphorus. So the numbers on your fertilizer the nitrogen is first, it needs to be smaller than the middle and the last number, with the middle number being highest. 
that's where things like Epsom salt, molasses, milk, and these are all probably classified as organic comes in. I'm big on using Epsom salt. I use molasses. If there's a little bit of milk or buttermilk left in the container, I fill it up with water and I, I water my plants. Like tomatoes, peppers like Epsom salt. Peppers are prone to magnesium deficiency because we're gardening in the sand and there's little to no nutrients found in the sand. Organic matter also helps to provide nutrients and it helps with water retention. So if you have, if you have a pile of leaves, work that into your soil. It will add organic matter. It will add nutrients to your sand. Organic matter also helps to provide nutrients and water retention. Milk in the garden provides calcium and B vitamins that help with plant growth and also helps prevent blossom end rot that is commonly found in peppers, tomatoes, and squash. Blossom end rot occurs when you, oh, I'm not going to water today, I have other things to do, and your watering becomes inconsistent. They dry out, or then they get wet, soggy feet, and then they dry out. Inconsistent watering will lead to blossom end rot, and also calcium deficiency will lead to blossom end rot. If you have a, a roll of tongues or rollades, you can actually stick one of those in the ground when you plant your plants and it helps provide calcium to the plant. Pepper plants. Peppers need extra magnesium, especially if you grow them in pots. Container gardening is a lot easier in some ways, but some plants require more attention when you do grow them in containers. This is the label on a jar of molasses. I'm sure you have this in your cupboard. If you don't, you should because it helps with leg cramps too. If you see here, it has calcium, magnesium. Our plants need these two items. Molasses also helps the microbes grow in the soil to allow your plants to absorb the nutrients they need. Peppers require six to eight, six to eight hours of sunlight per day. I know a lot of people that garden in full sunlight. I do not practice that. My plants get some morning sun, they get late afternoon, but then around 4 o'clock, they're shaded and they're not getting that beating hot sun at 4, 5, and 6 o'clock. And I have good luck that way. Even though it says full sun, it is so hot here that I'm sure the plants appreciate that shade in the hottest part of the day. They need 1 to 2 inches of water per week. And that's, once again, also dependent on your temperature. Your soil is not going to dry out as fast at 75 and 80 degrees as it is at 90 and 100 degrees. If, you grow, if you're growing your peppers in pots or containers, you can bring them in and overwinter them in a warm environment. They will grow bushier the following year and will produce fruit earlier in the season than newly started plants. Peppers are classified according to hot or mild flavor. Some of the sweet peppers and bell varieties are the cherry pepper, the cubanella pepper, the orange bell pepper, the purple bell pepper, roasting peppers, yellow bell. And these are the chilies. Your jalapeno, your poblano, chilaca, the Anaheim, Marisol, Serrano, Bola, Casabel, Chili Seco, Colorado, Pasilla, Rancho, Tapolte. These are all a warm to hot variety. 
banana peppers, they're long and they're tapered, and they're usually yellow. But these two will turn red if you leave them on the vine long enough. Bells have a block appearance. They're square and have a blocky appearance. And then there's lots of different varieties like the Marconi, and that's my favorite pepper to grow because they grow great big. They're large and they're red-green. They can be solid red, kind of orange, and they even kind of purple. And then your cherry, to, your cherry peppers, they vary in size and color from orange to deep red. <coughs> Bells are high in vitamin C, K1, E, folate, and potassium. Sweet cherries, banana, jalapeno, senorita, full jew, false alarm, tam, mild pimento, marconi, and cubanella, they kind of fall in the bell class. Hot peppers are a southern tradition. Fiery peppers beat oranges three to one in terms of vitamin C. They're very high in vitamin C. They also have vitamins A, B, and E. Capsaicin acts as an antioxidant, protecting your cells and fighting inflammation. Anaheim chili, they're popular for drying. Jalapeno, ancho. Ancho, you see in the supermarket, already dried. I use these and rehydrate them when I make my tamales. They're very good. They have a distinct flavor to them, kind of smoky. And then your habaneros, your serranos, these right here are super for salsa. And then the chili piquin, the tiny bird's eye peppers, which you find growing wild and along fence lines, it's popular in a vinegar sauce and a must for mustard greens. The amount of heat varies in all varieties. Some are mildly hot, some are medium hot, some are fiery, you could die hot. <laughs> And if you see scary names like ghost, scorpion, reaper, it means beware because they are very hot. This is the Scoville scale. Carolina reaper is at the top from 1 million to 400,000 to 2,200,000 units of heat. And then your peppuccini is 100 to 500. So you see there's a big range there and how hot different peppers are. Habanero, 500,000 Scoville heat units, it used to be the hottest pepper out there. Scoville heat scale rates the capsicum level based on how much sugar water it takes to neutralize the heat. 0 to 1,641,183 Scoville heat units. The top score is the Carolina Reaper. It's the hottest pepper on earth. <coughs> New hybrids are being developed all the time at UC Davis in California. So one day the Carolina Reaper may not be at the top of the Scoville chart. New varieties every day. Okay, so here we go. Capsation 911. I hope we never have to call 911 for your hands on fire. But if we do, and from eating hot peppers, skip drinking water. The first thing somebody does when they have hot pepper and their mouth is on fire is they drink a glass of water. That is the wrong thing to do. You need to take small sips of milk. Water doesn't dissolve the capsaicin, milk fat does. 
bread or starchy food if you're lactose intolerant is, is your next best thing to the dairy. <laughs> and if your hands are on fire from handling hot peppers, make a solution five to one. Five parts water to one part bleach. This solution turns the capsation into a salt that will rinse away. Wash your hands with soap and water, dry well, and apply hand moisturizer. Capsation, found in mild peppers, found in chili peppers, also used in pain management, <coughs> cream or patches. You can actually buy a tube at the drugstore that has that in there for arthritis and you know, your bad knees and I don't think I would actually use it on my hands because I would be afraid I would touch my face or my eyes and that might not be pleasant. Capsation is found in the veins, the ribs, and the seeds of the plant. Caution, when hot, handling hot peppers, wear gloves. Dried peppers are hotter than fresh peppers. And the thinner the stem, usually the hotter the pepper. When you're in the grocery store and you're trying to decide which variety of pepper to buy for your recipe, and you kind of want something that's maybe not too hot, but not, you know, not like the bell, which is no heat, you can look at the stems of these peppers. The thinner the stem, see the difference in these stems? The thinner the stem, the hotter the pepper is. And I know a lot of times when I'm in my garden, if I'm doing something in there or even picking the peppers, my hands sometimes will burn from just touching the leaves and stuff, from picking them. So you really need to be careful. So harvesting sweet peppers, when allowed to reach maturity on the plant, they will turn red. This pepper started out green, and as it ripened, it turned red. They will turn red, and they're sweeter. They contain more vitamins, A and C, more potassium, folic acid, and fiber. Red peppers pack the most nutrition, and they're low in calories. When harvesting peppers, always use shears or a knife. You don't want to just break them off because if you try to break them off, you're most likely going to break your plant. <coughs> you will notice that when jalapenos are ripe or mature, that they will exhibit small cracks around the shoulder of the fruit. So around this top, a lot of times you'll notice that they have little cracks and they're kind of purpley. That's when you know they're mature and they're ripe. <coughs> so common problems when growing peppers. You have diseases, viruses, bacterial spot, anthra anthracnose. Anthracnose. We were discussing this. <laughs> and then you have insects, aphids, flea beetles. I'm not quite sure what flea beetles are. Cutworms pepper weevil, but I'm sure if we uh, visited with Noveline, she could really give us a, a, a good lecture on insects that affect pepper plants. Then you have cultural problems, and these are problems we create. Blossom end rot, the moisture irregularities or the calcium deficiency. Blossom drop, you don't have much control over that. That's when the night temperature rises above 75 degrees. Or when you have a full crop of fruit. Fruit set is excessive. The plant is trying to protect itself, trying to survive. That's why a lot of times your little peppers will fall off because the plant is loaded with fruit. And then, of course, sunburn on fruit. And that's where gardening in full sun comes in place. They appreciate that afternoon shade. OK, so now let's talk about what do you do with all those harvested peppers. 
I know I grow so many peppers and it's like just Joe and I and then I give them away and I give them to my kids and but what really do you do with all those harvested peppers? Here's here's just some. This is one day. This is one day. This is what I would pick in one day. These are my from last year. Okay, you can. They're can, it canned or preserved in oil, roasted, stuffed. You can make chilies, soups or stews. You can, they're fried. You can batter and fry them. You can use a conventional fryer or an air fryer. You can make sauces or dips. Um, you can stew them with tomatoes. And here are some, anybody know what these are? Hat, Anaheim, and in the early fall, everywhere you go, they have they offer them for sale already roasted. HEB offers them, and if you're in New Mexico, they're everywhere. You can make hot sauce and salsas, dried and powdered. Powdered. You can make quiche. You can make smoothies. Here's some dried peppers that I dried. A lot of times, these are left, this is what I have left from last year. This is what I do. I take this clear nylon, like fishing, fishing string, and I thread them, and I hang them in my kitchen window. It dries them naturally, and I break them off and use them as I need. These are long hops. This is the variety. These are long hops. And then I put some in jars. Or you can make salsa. All those little small tomatoes, what do you do with them? I put them in a pot. I cut a jalapeno up or a serrano. I cut an onion up, red onion, white onion, whatever I may have. I put a little bit of water in there. I put the top on. I cook it down. I put all of it in the blender, skin and all. And it's just like what you get in the restaurant. And it only takes a few minutes to fix it. And you can make your own dehydrated vegetable bouillon. And there's the recipe. A half a cup of dried celery, dried onion, you can dry carrots, uh, red sweet pepper, you can add jalapeno pepper to it, garlic powder, black pepper. Some of these things you can take out of your cabinet cupboard and you can add to it, like with your peppers. You can dehydrate them and powder them and add it to the mix. And a good processor, blend until powder, store in an airtight container, and store cool, dry, dark plates. You can also add herbs of your choice to this mixture. You can stir fry, you can pickled in chutneys, you can freeze them. Here's a, a neat little recipe. It's a watermelon salad with hot peppers and basil. It's watermelon chunks, red onion, seedless grapes, green bell pepper, minced hot chili peppers, lime juice, extra virgin olive oil, basil, salt and pepper to taste. Combine it in a bowl, toss it well, allow the flowers to blend, and it's a nice cool summer salad. And then we have pineapple jalapeno margaritas. We're staying Bradley. And Richard. Richard, you want to tell us about the margaritas? I don't make pepper margaritas, but I'll take jalapenos and I'll infuse the vodka with the, with the jalapenos. 
Uh, basically, one one um, one jalapeno pepper to one cup of vodka is what is the ratio that I use, and then I'll use that infused vodka later on to make either a nice spicy martini or add a little kick to a Bloody Mary. One cup of vodka, one uh, one pepper, and I dice it. I usually see, and I'll uh, take the ribs out, and I'll infuse it for anywhere between eight to twenty-four hours. The longer you let it infuse, the spicier it is, and then strain it off. And then whenever I'm done. I'll take those peppers and I'll either infuse another batch of vodka or else I'll use those peppers and I'll either uh, make biscuits with them or you know, put them in, I'll, I'll use them for something else. I just don't throw them out. Yeah, put them in salsa or something. As you can see, pepper, peppers are versatile. Okay, so let's talk a minute about peppers versus tomatoes. I know a lot of people like to grow tomatoes, and everybody is all, always so proud. They come and they say, look at this big tomato I grew. Well, I'm just the opposite. I grow the tomatoes, yes, but my thing is the peppers. Every year to the Home Garden Show, I always bring big Marconi peppers, and Marjean always purchases them. She loves them. So I encourage all the Master Gardeners to attend and participate in the Home and Garden Show this year. Okay, Kathy, what, what does Margie do with them? She stuffs them. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Okay, so peppers versus tomatoes. Okay, so red capsium. Peppers have 50% more calories because of, it, because of its natural sweetness. It has more sugar, 50% more fiber, eight times more vitamin C and beta carotene, and 15 times more vitamin E than a tomato. So, on the scale, peppers have more nutrition than a tomato. But your tomato is packed with an oxidant, lycopene, Capsation has no lycopene. Red capsation does have an antioxidant, but it's called cryptotaxathin, which converts vitamin A. So it's a tie between really which, which fruit is healthier. They're both very good for you. That's all it makes all sense. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so when, when, when I, you should refrigerate your peppers because they will continue to ripen and then they will become rotten. That enzyme on your pepper. So when you're dehydrating peppers, it's recommended that you actually blanch them, dehydrate them, and powder them because you want to stop that enzyme. So when you have yours up in the window, do you need No, I just, I just, you know, my, my great-grandmother, my grandparents, they always did that. And my great-grandmother, if you're superstitious, believed that it kept evil away. Vampires and werewolves. And when you refrigerate those peppers, keep them in the vegetable drawer because they like humidity. And, um, they will continue to ripen, just like a tomato will, once you pick them, if you leave them on the counter. So am I doing a disservice about the mine and Ziploc bag and freezer before I want to make salsa a few months later? Are you? Am I doing a disservice to my peppers if I put them in a big Ziploc bag and throw them in the freezer after I pick them to make salsa to whenever I feel like it two or three months later? Go ahead, just let it go. I do, I do both. If I'm going to dehydrate them, I blanch them because I'm going to have a continuous shelf life. You know, because I want to stop the enzyme process. So I will blanch them and then dehydrate them. I like to take some peppers, chop them, throw them in a skillet with olive oil, quite a bit of olive oil, just to the point that they're beginning to wilt and freeze them in Ziploc bags all flattened out so that you can just break off a chunk to put in a recipe. Most of the time, 
you're going to have an oil in that recipe or you're throwing it back in the skillet. That oil, the olive oil around it seems to prevent the freezer burn and it just makes fixing the recipe that much faster. Anyway. And by making the Ziploc bags flat, you just break off a chunk of it however much you want. On that same order, you could do it in um, ice cubes. Put it in an ice cube tray, freeze right. it, and then put it in your Ziploc. And you already have like a tablespoon. But if I know I'm going to be using them, like, okay, you see, I bought this pepper. I bought these peppers Saturday, and it was it was pretty when I bought it. But you can see it's wrinkling because it's aging. But when you live 45 miles from the grocery store, this is what you have to do. But if I know I'm going to be using the pepper in, in two or three days, I just put them in the freezer. I don't do anything to them. I just put them in the Ziploc and put them in the freezer and then take them out and use them. So roasted peppers, you can roast them and you can marinate them. When you roast them, you can do it in the oven. You can wet them, put them under the broiler and roast them that way. You can put them on your barbecue grill. I like to put them on the barbecue grill because it's, it's simple, easy, and no mess. I wet them, I put them on the grill, I char them till they're black and keep turning them. Then I put them in a paper bag and I let them cool and the peel comes right off. Um, and then I add olive oil and garlic to them and it makes a good cold salad like that to eat just like that. Or you can put those on top of your green salad. Um, and you cut them in half and you de-seed them and you debane them. And then once you roast them like that, you can serve them with chicken cutlets or, and a salad. And it's a very good meal. It's a good summer side dish. Besides the fact that the pretty fall colors, red, yellow, orange, in the fall, it makes a beautiful salad, and you can throw a handful, handful of dried cranberries in there and some, some chopped nuts with your olive oil. Um, you can make stuffed peppers. Now, this is where you get creative. You can, you can stuff the bells, you can stuff the poblanos, you can stuff these jalapenos, you can stuff these anaheims. You can stuff any pepper in any different form or fashion. You can, you can put cheeses, you can wrap them in bacon. If you look in your little handout, we have a picture here with some ideas. Now, does that not look appetizing? You can use meats, you can use chopped vegetables, you can use cheeses, you can put rice, your choice. What I like to do, and y'all are probably going to go, but I take ground meat and I brown it with onion and celery and I put a handful of raisins in there. And then I stuff my peppers and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll pour chopped tomatoes or salsa on top and bake them. The raisins in the meat gives it a very good flavor. And they cook away, and your kids don't know they're in there. And cranberries also would be good. At Thanksgiving now, because my kids like heat, I make a cranberry relish with cranberries and orange and apple, and I dice some hot pepper up in it. Serrano, jalapeno, whatever I might have, I add to that and I cook it just a little bit, and they really like it. Or you can serve it cold without pre-cooking it. And everybody likes the bacon-wrapped jalapenos, and I'm sure y'all have seen these little trays before, these little stainless pepper trays, that you put your jalapeno pepper up in it, and you put it on your grill, and then the bacon grease sizzles down and makes a big flame and your husband throws water on it and doesn't realize it makes a bigger flame 
But I also, when I dehydrate my peppers, this is what I have left from last year. This is jalapeno. I let them ripen and turn red. And then I dehydrated them. Well, I blanched them first for just like maybe one and a half minutes and then put them in the cold water, wiped them, and then put them in the dehydrator. This is just... Do you dehydrate them whole or do you slice them first? I cut them up. And the reason I cut them up is so it won't take so long to dehydrate them. And then I have a little coffee grinder that is just for grinding things, not coffee. And I, I grind them in that. And all the masks from COVID, I find useful now for powdering hot peppers. And I do it out there in my utility room because it's... We can't hear you on this. Dehydrating peppers and powdering them. I've been wearing the COVID mask and doing it in my utility room because it's very strong when you powder it. And then salt is a limiter in, in, in cattle supplements and different things they use salt as a limiter. I mix it with salt so you're not using too much. Kind of saves the stomach lining. And also you can take these peppers and you can smoke them in your smoker when you're smoking your chicken or your brisket. Smoked peppers are delicious with cheese. So the most nutritious way to serve peppers is to slice and dice and serve them raw, like on a vegetable tray or platter. You can actually use, pour out a pepper and you can use it to hold your dip. I make a delicious dip, it's called this red pepper dip. My grandmother always made it. Is it hot? Or no, it hot no, it food? has no heat. It's sweet. Red, red bells, <coughs> red pe sweet peppers. You roast them, and then you put them in the food processor with olive oil, garlic, uh, and, the, and then any kind of white bean like the cannonelli, and you process it. The bean gives it its thickness and texture in place of your dairy like sour cream or cheeses and it makes it much healthier. Um, and that's really a guilt free <coughs> dip you know that you can serve with pita chips or other raw vegetables. It's flavorful, no fat, and it has a, a creamy texture and it's such a pretty color. So it has a lot of eye appeal. You can also use that as a sauce to pour over your, your, your chicken dish, your baked chicken dish. And using the beans also as a protein source. You know, and they have fiber also. Oh, and I have this neat little pepper knife. This is great for jalapenos. You can see, you just cut the top off and put it in, and it pours your peppers real nicely. Pass that around. You may not that around. <laughs> peppers are a great addition to your flower beds or grown with your herbs. They don't actually have to be grown in a row in the garden. You can put them in the flower beds and you know grow them in containers with your herbs. <laughs> Hot and sweet peppers. Peppers have become a common ingredient for home canners, looking to add spice, heat to jams and jellies. And fruits that make a great combination with peppers that are overlooked. Not many people think to use apricot or raspberry or cranberries. They pair they well with peppers. And then, of course, combining peppers with tomatoes and herbs. Okay, so the seeds, 
if you if you don't deseed your peppers before you use them to make your recipes, those seeds become tough when they're boiled. And I'd recommend refraining from using them in your recipes. Just take the time to clean your peppers out and don't have seeds in it. Then the light colored ribs and bell or sweet peppers, they're very fibrous and they become quite tough when they're boiled and that also affects the flavor and the texture, the end result of your jelly or jam. And then we have the famous chili pepper spray. Those that practice organic gardening, you can take fresh peppers, chili pepper powder, and make a natural insecticide for those chewing insects. If you're using fresh peppers, puree a half a cup of peppers with one cup of water and then add another quart of water and boil. Once cooled, strain and add a few drops of mild organic liquid dish soap. That helps the, the pepper mixture adhere to your plant. If you're using just plain chili pepper powder, mix one tablespoon with one quart of water and a few drops of mild organic soap. And then go to town and spray your, all your garden plants that those insects are chewing up. So Kathy, is that kind of like on the same level that you know we spray our fences so our horses don't chew them? I actually, I had one horse one time that when you put him up at night in the stall, yeah. he would, he would gnaw yeah. on the wood. So I did that. I took a bar of soap and I, I raked the soap on the wood. And I don't know if it was a combination of the soap and the pepper spray, but once I did that pepper spray on there and saturated all the wood, that little bad habit stopped. A lot of work for thumbs up. Yes. Okay, so then you have the taser, you have a pistol, and best choice, would, yes, would be pepper spray. Law enforcement uses it very often for crowd control with great success. That pepper spray will make your eyes burn. And here's another little thing you can do with those peppers. Take some Italian sausage, garlic, some cream cheese, black pepper and chives. Fill your pepper, stick it under the broiler, let the cheese melt. Delicious little appetizer. And then, and this was a, and I can never say this right, Fakashi, is that right, Carol? Fakashi. Yeah, Fakashi, yeah, the bread, the flat dough bread. This is, this is an Italian recipe. Um, I made this one last year, and I used my peppers. <coughs> you know, presentation is everything. If it looks nice. It is a great recipe. If it looks nice, it's more appetizing and appealing. And then, of course, salsa again. <coughs> and what's a hatch chili? Of course, it's grown in New Mexico only, but that's really not true. And Carol comes from that area. Have you been to Hatch? Yes. We have family there, and um, it's just amazing. Um, all the peppers that you see there are going out in the fields. Well, they come here, they have Yes, they do. They'll grow. Okay. Are hatch chilies hotter than jalapeno? Well, generally speaking, the hatch chili is hotter than an Anaheim, but slightly milder than a jalapeno. The flavor is similar to the Anaheim. <coughs> Late every summer, the southwestern United States goes crazy for the hatch chili. Many, so, there's many, many varieties. Right down this name, Big Jim. Big Jim. It's a very, very flavorful one. And they have them in mild, medium, and hot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the hot ones, if we can't eat them, they're too hot. They really are. Of course, we're sensitive. What was so the name? We brought back 40 pounds in the back of our car. And I mean, the they smell was this smell. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And then here's, here's some of my pepper plants last year. I, I've grown them in the containers like this. There's, let's see. I think there's about six peppers in there. You hear people talk all the time that you're supposed to have 
a foot between each plant and that they need air circulation, I have perfect, perfect. And mine don't, mine all touch. They like to be cozy. And then here's, here's in the ground that I've planted and I stay from the cages and I have this fence behind it, a cattle panel. And there's some. Those are banana. Bananas start out green and turn yellow. And then I took this picture in New Mexico when we went to Albuquerque back in October. Everywhere you go in New Mexico, you see the ristras. And Richard printed a section here if you want to make one for yourself. How to make the chili ristra is in this. Yeah. Chili is Spanish for pepper. In Mexico, chili can be any kind of pepper, sweet or hot. The chili ristras of New Mexico. Ristras are the strings of chili you see hanging along fences, on patios, and on portals all over New Mexico in the fall. And then here's some seed sources for unusual peppers and tomatoes. Pepper Joe's, which is in Pennsylvania. The Chili Pepper Institute, New Mexico State University. And then of course the Texas A&M Easy Gardening Publication, which is on the front of your handout. And once again, I would like to thank you all for coming to my party. I enjoyed presenting this to you today.